Good morning, everyone. I heard a story, a true story once, that there was this girl who grew up in a very secular Jewish home. When she went to college, she started to get involved in Christianity. And she was going to church and considering conversion. When her father heard this, uh, he wasn't a religious Jew, but this concerned him. So he went to talk to the rabbi. The rabbi said, I'll go to the campus, I'll talk to your daughter. He calls the daughter, the rabbi, this reformed rabbi. He goes, he meets with this girl on campus. He says, you know, what did you find in Christianity that you didn't have in Judaism? She says, Christianity is filled with love. There's so much love in Christianity. Uh, the, The passages they say are so full of love. He says, really, could you give me an example of which passage really moves you? She says, this is one passage I just love. It's so moving. We say it all the time. It says, "And you should love the Lord your God with all. The, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might." Obviously, that's the second passage in the Shema. But she was not familiar with the Shema. She thought the Rambam says on this passage in the Shema, "You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might." That what does it mean to love God? It says Maimonides, like a man who's love sick, and he can't get a woman off his mind. And he's constantly thinking about her. That's the way a person should be with God. That he should be lovesick for God. That cholas ahava, he says. Sick with love. That he can't stop thinking about God because of his deep love for God. In this week's Parsha, we learn about the, the Mishkan and the various vessels that were made. And the first thing when the Kohen came in is he washed his hands in the kior, the lever, which was a copper-made wash basin. And the Torah tells us in this week's parsha that the lever was made out of copper. Where did they get the copper for the lever? So it says that the women donated their mirrors. In those days, mirrors were a piece of copper that was shine polished very well until it reflected their image. So the women gave their mirrors, the copper mirrors. Moshe Benu melted the mirrors, the copper, and made the lever, the key or the wash basin for the Kohen when he washed his hands and his feet every day. But the Medrash says something fascinating. When the Jews, when the women came with their copper levers, uh, mirrors, Moshe Rabbeinu said, I'm not accepting these contributions. When the women gave jewelry, he accepted the gold, but he said, mirrors? I'm not taking mirrors. Why? Because mirrors are an object of vanity. They're used for vanity, to look at your, your beauty. He said, why would I accept that for the holy tabernacle? I don't want it. God said to him, not only should you take it, But these mirrors are the most precious contribution from all of the gifts. Why? Because when the Jews were in slavery in Egypt, they had back-breaking labor, and they lost their physical desire to be intimate with their wives and to procreate. They would come home, they were physically exhausted, beaten, crushed, humiliated, uh, you know, demoralized. And they also didn't want to have children, because they said, why would we have children in slavery? Our kids are going to be future slaves. But the women understood that without children, there'll be no future to the Jewish people. So the Medrash says during the day, the women would beautify themselves, and they would go out to the fields where the men were being beaten and being labored, and they would show the men their reflection in the mirror to whet their appetite, to stimulate them, to excite them, to get them to be desirous of them, so that later they would be intimate with them and procreate with them. And God says these mirrors that were used for love, that were used for passion, that was used for intimacy, that was used to bring husbands and wives together and procreate and save the Jewish nation. These are the most precious gift. These copper mirrors will be used as the first vessel when the Kohen comes in to wash his hands. And the Ebenezer makes an amazing observation. He says every vessel in the tabernacle has a measurement, except the kior. There's no measurement how big it should be. You know why, says the Ebenezer? Because God says as many mirrors as there are, that's how big it's going to be. I don't want to reject even one mirror. Every single mirror is precious. When you talk about love and you talk about mirrors, you know, if you compliment somebody, they always smile. Why do they smile? Because when you compliment someone, you're putting up a mirror to them and showing them their own goodness, their own reflection. Sometimes we don't love ourselves enough. We don't see our own goodness. Someone compliments you, points out something good you did, they're showing you your own spiritual self-image of your goodness. And you, as a result, love yourself more. And therefore you have to smile when someone compliments you because you fall more in love with yourself. We should all be mirrors to each other. Rather than show each other the negative parts of each other, we should show each other the good sides to help us love each other and love ourselves even more. I'm going to tell you something fascinating. The Lubavitch Rebbe in March 2nd, 1992, it was, a, it was a Monday, was praying at his father-in-law's grave. He had a stroke. 
And he wasn't able to speak after that till 1994 when he passed away. That was on Monday. The day before, he was giving out dollars as he would always do on Sundays. And the last person in line, and this is the last time the Rebbe spoke, the last words the Rebbe said on earth was a little girl, a seven-year-old girl came by for dollars and the Rebbe gave her a dollar and said blessing and success as the Rebbe would always say, Baruch HaVatzlach. And this little girl looked at the Rebbe and said, Rebbe, I love you. And the Rebbe broke out a big, big smile and gave her another dollar and said, this is for the love. And you think about the last communication, the words of a little girl to the Rebbe, a giant, a monumental Jewish leader, and says, I love you. And the Rebbe says, thank you for the love. Because everyone wants love. Everyone needs love. And love can bridge a seven-year-old girl with a giant leader of the generation. Why? Because love is a universal language. And the Torah says the Kir accepted all the mirrors, had no measurement. Why? Because the more love, the better. And Judaism is a religion of love. As Maimonides says, we should be lovesick for Hashem, which by extension is lovesick for all of His children, all of the Jewish people, and all of mankind.